Hey, it's Mars. Welcome back to my channel where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your own interactive video on YouTube, essentially a choose your own adventure video. A few commenters asked how I put together my Morndale Manor interactive video. So I decided that I would break it down for you guys with all of the steps that you would need to do to make your own and just include some examples of how I created some assets for the game and also share with you the apps and stuff that I use for that particular video. We have a lot to go over, so let's go ahead and jump in. Be sure to like and comment down below. And also, if you would like to get more content from me that's really centered around horror books, but with a supernatural obsession, <laughs> hit that subscribe button. The most important part of this whole entire thing, story. You have to have some story. For Morndale Manor, I just wanted to have a guest come and be a investigator for a night at a haunted mansion. Welcome to my haunted house. And I wanted the host to sort of walk them through each room, um, telling them what happened in this room, the history, or share some books because I wanted to add this book element to it. And then there would be a nefarious ending for the guest. So I put in two endings and that's really where I started. And then I started building up that story, creating background stories for the ghosts and for the house and, and making puzzles and things like that. So you really need your story together before you can kind of do anything. You know, maybe what kind of vibe you're going for, the style, because all of that's gonna also play into like all of your art assets as well. So there are three parts to making this kind of video. There's the art, the assembly, and the upload. Art is gonna be all of the creative stuff that you need to create for the video itself. Backgrounds, uh, characters, illustrations, videos, scripts, whatever. Whatever you need to tell this story visually. The next part will be the assembly, which will mean taking all of these assets and bringing them into some type of video editor. You're gonna edit all of these together and then create little clips from them. And then you're gonna take all of those clips and you're gonna upload it to YouTube. So that's basically the three main parts. You're definitely gonna need some way of making sure that your story is flowing correctly. And by that, I mean like a flow chart of decisions and what happens with those decisions if the player chooses A or B. I use twinery.org to set up mine. This helped me really like look at the bigger picture and to see where things are connecting, where I needed to change things. And it just kind of gave me this overall bigger picture. But I also did it with index cards. I used Midjourney to create most of the images. So the backgrounds and items, and I did a lot of editing and manipulation in Photoshop. So Midjourney is an image generator. It's an AI image generator. There are tons of them out there, but you don't have to use that. You can use stock images. You can make your own illustrations illustrations, photographs, videos, whatever you want. You're just going to need, you know, some medium for your images. I'm a Premiere Pro person, so I always use Premiere Pro for all of my video editing. You could use After Effects, you could use Final Cut, you could use a lot of different programs. Premiere Pro for me is faster and quicker because I know how it works. And I was really in a time crunch here. So the thing about Mid Journey was it creates images really quickly. And so I was able to pull this off in about, I think it was like five or six weeks, which I really wished I would have started sooner, so I had at least two months to work on it. As for music and sound design, I get all of my sound, foley and uh, background music and stuff like that. I get all of that from Motion Array. I like their library. They usually have what I'm looking for, but sometimes if they don't, I just record my own sounds. As for music, if I can't find the music that I want, there's tons of other places that you can go to look for free music. YouTube even has its own library that you can use as well. So I'm gonna show you how I create an image from Mint Journey, just so you can see what it looks like. And I decided I wanted to do like a creepy doll room situation because why not? Mint Journey is one of those things where you can really get pretty crazy with it, with you know your descriptions and everything, but I keep it pretty simple. I'm not looking to spend that much time on it, obviously, as long as it looks good and fits my purposes. So I'm having a little trouble typing here, but that's just 
me. <laughs> um, so creepy room with old porcelain dolls, atmospheric, eerie, and then I'm putting in what um, dimensions I want. So 16 by nine. And that's really gonna give us our standard size for YouTube. So it's usually pretty fast. It takes maybe, I'd say like under a minute to create all of the images. So when I was creating all of the images for Morndale Manor, I had 17 backgrounds. So it, it took me a while to come up with all the backgrounds, especially when they weren't always coming out the way I wanted to. So I was having to kind of edit the prompts and see if they would come out better. So this is interesting, <laughs> but I think I like the lower right one the best. That's the one I think has the most interesting layout. So we're gonna go ahead and um, upscale this, which is going to make it just in higher resolution. You can also do other things here like zoom out and you can make it higher. You can upscale to four, but I didn't do that. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this and then bring it into Photoshop beta. Photoshop beta has now been brought into Photoshop. So if you have the latest Photoshop, you don't need Photoshop beta. <laughs> this is an old computer, so I just had to do it that way. So we dropped in our image here and it looks pretty good, but this chair is really wonky. It just looks real weird. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it. And this is what I did for a lot of the backgrounds. Um, I took out and added things that didn't look good or didn't make sense. And sometimes I would use um, the AI to do that. And other times I would just hand paint it if I had to. Uh, hand painting it by digital painting, I mean. Here, it looks like the first one looks really good. I think that looks decent. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. Um, now, I think I want to add a feature here that I can animate. So I'm going to try and see if I can get eyes to pop out or appear in this doll's head. And let's see what it creates. It can create things that usually they don't look that good, but they give you three options. You cycle through them and you can just keep trying and trying and trying as many times as you need to. Um, so that does not look very good. That one looks pretty good. That one, that one looks good, but I think I like this one the most. So I'm going to go ahead and just edit this until it looks the way I want it to. And then I'm going to save the eyes by themselves as a PNG. And then the background is a JPEG. Then I'll export them and I'll bring them into Premiere Pro. So some of the editing I'm doing here is I'm changing the dimensions of the eyes. I'm taking off details uh, that the AI put in that I want to take out. Like the eyebrows don't make sense because the doll didn't have any eyebrows and I just really want her eyes to stick out. So I'm tr what I'm trying to do is to get these eyes to look like they're already in there. And when I animate them, they just look like they're open. So yeah, I think that looks really good. Okay, so I'm really happy with this. I think it looks creepy and nightmare inducing, which is everything they wanted. I thought maybe I would go ahead and put some candles down here, but it came out really bad. But it, I could have got some stock imagery and did some photo manipulation and then just put those in there, but I didn't really care. I didn't think it really needed it. So I just decided not to go with them. I just left it. So that's kind of basically how I did all of the backgrounds with photo manipulation and editing and using AI replace and things like that. That's the method that I felt like worked really well, but you could do this with stock images or anything else. So. You don't have to use like an image generator or anything. So now you need to take your story and you need to break it down in scenes. So every scene is going to be a location. So if you have a story that's like office hallway um, conference room, you need to have three scenes for each one of those because you need to create artwork for each one. And you also need to know what happens in that room if you need to create anything specific for it. Is there dialogue? Are there puzzles? Are there, you know, whatever. That way you can kind of keep track of what each room is supposed to be doing. Once I started really getting into the depths of this, things kind of started changing. And so there's a lot of revisions all over these cards. So I can definitely show you an example of like what that sort of looks like on Twinery. All of these arrows are showing you where the player is gonna go when they make a certain decision. So in the very beginning of the game, we're in the um, entrance way of the house. So you have a choice, you can go to the parlor or you can go to the bathroom. So if you go to the parlor, you can see here that I have Bookshare and then they can choose where they're going. So nothing crazy is happening in this room, it's just an option. So then they make their choice and then we can see here that here's the music room and here's the second cellar. There's a cellar too, because the first cellar was a cellar that people would go when they got answers 
wrong. So they would go to the cellar where absolutely nothing happens. There's no ghosts, there's no talks about books, there's nothing. Um, so I, I specifically really wanted that feature. And then you can tell down here that there's two endings. So the playroom is uh, ending two, and then there's the hidden room, which is ending one. And there are some features built in like the ballroom. There's a ballroom with like dancing ghosts. But if you don't go to the music room from the parlor, you will never see it. You have to like make that specific decision. You can never get there from anywhere else. So I had to make sure that you couldn't get to the ballroom by accident anywhere else. I also had a scene for the attic when the door was locked. So this means I needed two attics. I needed an attic that had the door lock and then an attic that was open. If you got the attic that was locked, then it would send you back to a place where you could unlock it. So this is what Morindale Manor looks like. As a sample for what we're talking about here, so you have your scene where you start. And for this example, I have, it's an office, and then I have a little bit of detail about what it looks like just for me. So cluttered 90s office with no windows. And the problem is that the door is locked. So now the user has to choose what option they want. A, look for the key, or B, break the door. If they choose to look for the key, they're gonna find the key in a coffee cup. That's a decision that I made. And I also made a note that I need an animation of a key in the cup. If they decide to try and go <laughs> brute force and break the door, um, the door does not break. So they're gonna be given an option to just find the key. I made a note that there should be sound design for the door specifically, but there should be sound design for everything. But this is where you wanna keep your notes. So this is how Twinery works on its most basic level. You can do really more complicated stuff with it, but I didn't get that far. So choice flow is gonna be really, really important. You're gonna to have to figure that out very carefully. And for me, the index cards really helped me kind of put things down and move things around so they made sense. Now let's get on to the assets. So like I said, you're gonna need apps for this um, and you're gonna to need to have like a specific idea of what you're going for. Um, and you can do any type of medium as long as it's visual. So I'm gonna show you a really quick example of two interactive videos. One is like really, really simple, really basic. And the other one is very, 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 very produced. So you can just see like how they do them differently, but it's really up to your imagination on how you wanna play with it. So this creator is using a very simple illustration style and it says, for some reason though, you can't really make that first step through the door. What will you do? And it gives you an option for three choices, which is nice. So this is Markiplier. He's a top tier <laughs> YouTuber, has a lot of money to spend on production. He's a filmmaker, so he did this using film. And it's very good and it's very clever. And I'll, one of the things that I love that he does in the end is that while you're waiting for the user to make a decision, the acting, the scene is still going. It's kind of like in this, this kind of state of waiting, but it's still active. So, you know, do whatever you want, basically. So now after you have all of your assets, right? Your video, your animations, your everything that you need for the visual components, you're gonna assemble. So I'm gonna show you like a quick clip of how I put these animations together. It's really, really simple. And it would be better and more effective if they were done in After Effects, um, just because Premiere Pro is a, it's more of an editor. It's not really an animator, but basically we just use keyframes. So we use keyframes and we move these images up and down, and then we use special effects to give them different looks and feels. So if that's transparent or whatever, and then using directional blurs and things like that to kind of give it that vibe that it's moving. The thing that's really gonna bring the animation together though is using sound design. So sound design is going to give those impacts where it's needed. It's gonna give it that emotional feeling that you're looking for. Sound design is critical. So before you get started on making the clips though, you need to keep in mind a few things, which is each scene is a video. It's a, it's, its own single video. So in Morndale Manor, you see that there's an intro where I talk to you and I say, hey, thanks for joining the team. And then it takes you to the entryway of the house, right? That's one video. And then it gives you options at the end to go somewhere. I think it's like parlor and music room or something. So then when those options come up and you click one, it's taking you to another video. So it has to operate that way. So you will need to make them all into clips and they have to be at least a minute long. You need some time for 
the cards to sit up there and give the user a moment to make that decision. So I used 20 seconds. Um, I thought that that was just more safe. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind. There's also a few like specifics, like these are the settings for the videos that I make um, when making most of my videos. So I just kind of kept it the same. You're also going to need thumbnails for every single clip. So it would look like this pick up the doll or leave the room. And this is how it's gonna look at the end of the video in that 20 seconds. So you can have this be anything you want. It could just be an image if you wanted it to, but whatever, they just need to know that there's a choice to be made and to make this choice. Now, once you have all of your clips and your thumbnails ready to go, you're gonna take them into YouTube and you're just gonna upload all of these videos. And when I initially uploaded them, I made sure that the title for the video was very clear from me. And then later when it's all perfect and it's all set up, go back in and change those titles to answer A, answer B, you know, whatever they need to say. So you want to upload all of these unlisted first. You're going to want to like put all of your SEO and your tags and all that kind of stuff in the main video. So that's like your very first video. So this is what it looks like when you're adding the cards to one of the videos. I'm going to go to end screen. You have your options. So you have your options here under video element. So you have most recent upload, best reviewer, but we want something that's customized. So it's just video. And if you click on video, it'll give you the option to choose any video you want to link it to. Once you have all of that set up and it looks pretty good to you, you need to send it to someone to beta test. So call your friends and your family members and anyone who's willing to indulge you. You want me to what? To play the game and then let them give you the feedback. Most specifically, you know, did the links take them where they're supposed to go? Does it make sense? Um, did they end up somewhere and they weren't sure why they were there? Just like those type of things. And then you can fix them and adjust them. And then you're done. So, so. It's a long project, depending on what you're trying to achieve. It sounds a little complicated at first, but if you just stay organized, it won't be too overwhelming. If you do end up making one, please send it over to me. I would like to check it out. Um, but yeah, so this is how I did it. Besides all of the like how to upload it to YouTube, all the other stuff is kind of just really up to what you want to do and how you want to make it. And as long as you just fit the parameters of how you need to upload it to YouTube, you're golden. So thank you so much. If you guys have any questions about this, let me know down in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Please take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.